And of course, like we want people to go to Foursquare and search for things and you know use it as like a vessel, a discovery tool. But like, sometimes I don't think it's realistic that like, every single moment of the day, like, every decision you can use. Yeah, so we built um, we built this version of Foursquare that can basically sense when you've walked into a place, when you've walked out of a place, when you've entered a neighborhood that's familiar to you, when you've left a neighborhood, or when you've entered a neighborhood that's not familiar to you. And we can use those signals to push specific messages to you. You know, like I went to a cafe the other day and Foursquare pushed me a message. It's like, oh, you're at this cafe? You haven't been here before. The Wi-Fi password is, you know, 12345. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at, um, I was at Las Vegas. It's not a great password. It's, it's a housing password. Like I went to Las Vegas this weekend for a wedding, and as soon as I get to the hotel, and you know, I'm, I, I, I'm in the hotel for like what, 10 minutes or so before Foursquare buses me, it's like, oh, you haven't been back here in a year? There's two restaurants upstairs that you think you would like. Like that stuff is magical. Like I didn't ask Foursquare for the recommendation, but Foursquare understood that I was a little bit out of context. It's like, how often are you actually in this hotel in Las Vegas? Like, never. So let's heighten our awareness. And let's push you a message that we think can change your experience in that particular So did Foursquare figure that out based on other places you had gone, or other places your friends had gone, or the recommendations they had made about those places, it's, or all of those? Things? It's a little bit of everything. It's a mix of the uh, it's a mix of like where I've checked in, you know, where my friends have checked in, where other people I'm not friends with have checked in, you know, the types of places I've been at, say, you know, in New York, the categories of those restaurants. Which places, you know, are happen to be in the in the place that I'm at and match those categories. You know, popularity for time of day, popularity for seasonality. Right. It's really pretty pretty amazing. And are you finding more? You know, obviously the more and more check-ins you get, are you are you able to go even more granular in terms of you know whether it's a type of coffee or a specific type of food or as opposed to just this is a good place? Yeah, sure. So I mean, our our understanding of this was fairly limited. It was just basically about the places, like which places are open and closed and interesting or not, or have you been to or not, or have your friends been to or not. But Foursquare has this other notion of tips. People leave tips about specific places. Oh, the, you know, the bourbon old fashioned here is amazing, or the oysters here are the best I've ever had. And so based on the way that people interact or leave different tips, we start to understand people's taste. Right. Like we, we know that you like moderately you know, priced French restaurants, and that you like the escargot and the grenade sauce thing. Mm -hmm. You know, or we know that you like, you know, dive bars because you love, um, you know, two dollar cans of PBR. I got a four square tip that was very useful to me a year or so ago. I was in an airport that I was going to go to. I think it was the Starbucks. Mm -hmm. I checked four square. I, I don't even remember why. And there was a tip. Yeah. That said I got food poisoning at the Starbucks in this airport. So I went somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was just an incredibly useful. That's tip great. Yeah. Right like, now. but you had to check in to get that. Right. right. Yes. No, it, how do we do that where it just pops up for us? And that's the stuff that we've been really excited about. And it's really, I guess, really, really hard to do. Um, and I have some other slides I wanted to show you. Sure. Mind if I go through? Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing I think, I always think that um, like Foursquare is misunderstood as a company because people think of us as, you know, you know, basically just like limited check-ins. And then I hope that like that map that I showed you earlier, <clears throat> the map that I showed you earlier shows like, hey, you get a lot of check-in here, you can do some interesting stuff with it. But let me show you about like the real magic that is there another? Oh, oh, there it is. I was like, what is that? Um, here's so it's below my name is Phyllis. Yeah, I got that part. Let's go to the next slide. So here's, um, oh, am I still talking about No, can we get the next slide? There it is. That one? It's like a make-believe quicker. So here's, say click. here's, yeah, click. here's a map of where we are. Here's a uh, click. <laughs> awesome. Here's a quick six, right? And let's do one more click. And you get to see, um, you know, this is what this neighborhood looks right. This is what a, a typical local search engine will do. It's like, hey, there's a couple different places and we'll drop pins so on you them. you don't know anything about them. Or... Well, yeah, you don't know anything about them. I mean, it's a, that's, a, that's a fairly easy problem to solve. But what we want to do is be able to identify like, which places you're in, which places you're out of, which places should you be interested in. You know, go to the next slide. This is actually what Pier 60 looks like, right? There's a whole bunch of, it's a sampling of the check-ins. Some of them are right on the spot. Some of them are in the middle of the river because it might be like a BlackBerry with lousy GPS. Some of them might be in all the BlackBerry users are in the middle. Some of them might be older Android hardware, so it's a little bit off. They might actually be in the river. You know. <laughs> Some of them might be users that have uh, Wi-Fi turned off, for right. example. Um, you know, but like we, we get this sense for every single place we've been to. Here, go another side. So this is the High Line. Have you guys been in the High Line yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what the High Line looks like through through the lens of Foursquare. Like we get the shape of the venue. Here, do one more for me. And this is what, uh, that's the two of them together, do another one. And this is what, like, kind of all the places in the neighborhood, here, go one more. Click. Click, thank you. 
And this is what all the places in the neighborhood kind of look like. Now it's a little bit of a, of a mess here, and but one thing is clear is that you know places are not just defined by the like the architecture of the building. You know, like there's other like when we tried to do this stuff in 2011 with like circular geofences, mm -hmm. and it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. It's like not every place is a circle, and it's very hard to tell the, the shape, like the size of the circle. So this was this is kind of our big breakthrough. Like we should be able to make custom geofences for every place in the world, and you know it started with this idea. And like, we know that like other companies are trying to do this by looking at satellite imagery and then drawing shapes around places. But like this is the shape of the places based off of how your phone sees the world. Like the phone sees the world in a way that's different than than the way that we do. Like not every place is a box. Like you know the shape of the place is going to change based on the type of phone you have, the quality of the hardware, the settings on the phone, whether uh, you're running um, you know the, the operating system level. Um, and it's going to change based on you know the, the size and shape of the places will change based on the architecture around you. Glass buildings, brick, concrete. So here, go another slide for me, click. So you've got a much more sort of fluid view of, of what a place looks like based on the behavior and activity of people in that place. Yeah, like our big magic trick has been we've been able to turn all those check-ins into these custom geofences. And geofences for you know, 60 million places in the world that Look different depending on what's you know what phone that you have, what OS you have, what you know what um, you know what your check-in profile looks like, the places that you've been before. So here's like generic shapes of like there's that's what Pier 60 looks like. It doesn't look like it does in the map, but that's what the signal sync looks like. That's what the high line looks like apparently, like, according to like a wide variety of devices. And if you click again, like we're getting really good at like well you know at noon the shape looks a little bit different based mm -hmm. on where people are. If you click again, hey, the shape looks a little bit different based on you know, 7 p.m. Like restaurants are more popular, the high line is kind of closed down at that time. Mm -hmm. And like, what are you doing? still in the room. Yeah, these are the people that are kind of in their canoes floating around. There. <laughs> but we've, you know, we've been able to make these custom set of geofences uh, really all over the world. And this is the thing that makes sportswear kind of magical. It's like we can tell when people have walked into a fence. Like, have they spent time in that fence? Then have they left the fence? So the future is you don't have to check in at all. That's literally uh, just walk across some invisible barrier and Foursquare knows that you're there and knows what's there. Well, that's a, like an interesting question. Like, what is what does a version of Foursquare look like where you don't, have to, you don't have to check in, right? And it feels a lot like Google Now. I mean, it feels like, so Google Now knows, you know, because it's reading my email and looking at my calendar, I need to take this highway to get to the airport, my flight is delayed, all that stuff. But I don't have to do anything. I don't have to search for my flight. I don't have to look at the traffic. It just shows me that information. It's this whole uh, genre of like contextual awareness, right. right? And it's one thing to tease it out, like I told Google I had this flight, or I told Google that right. I like the Red Sox, so they'll push me the data. It's another thing for the device to understand, like, okay, I just walked into this restaurant that happens to be 100 feet by 100 feet. What do I need to know? Mm -hmm. I just walked out of the restaurant and I'm in a strange city. Where should I go next? And to do those types of contextual awareness is very, very difficult to do. Do you feel like there's any potential for people to get creeped out by, I mean, whenever I mention Google now, yeah. people say, well, that's creepy. It's reading my email, it's looking at my calendar, it knows where I'm going, it's not, it knows where I've been. Do you, do you foresee people getting creeped out that Foursquare knows they've been in all these places or they're at this specific place? Or? I think, like, you know, initially people will think of it as like, oh, is it is it aware of where I am all the time? And what it, like, what is it actually doing? Like what we've been hearing from our users is that when you can ping people, like when they go to a restaurant and they like suddenly they know what to order, or if they leave a place and we tell them where to go next, or if they land in a new city and we tell them three places to go, like that that is worth that trade off. Right. So the utility has to be high enough for them to. Yeah, you can't just be listening to these signals and not give the users anything back. Right. Like the whole thesis of the company has been let's ask people for all this location data, let's get it all and let's analyze it, and then let's recycle it and give it back to everyone in this room. In the form of you know these custom maps, these local searches that are that are unique for every single person that's doing it. these recommendations that are super personalized. And so theoretically, at least, is is Foursquare thinking about things beyond? I mean, I looked at the check-in sort of the, the things that people were mostly doing with nightlife, mm -hmm. food. Um, are you looking beyond that to things? You know, once you can sort of understand enough about a person's activity or behavior mm -hmm. or the things they like and don't like. Can you extrapolate from that to other things like products or purchases or stores or is the, are those the kind of, kinds of things you're thinking about? Yeah, stores definitely. Anything in the physical world is what right. we want to know. We 
want to help people discover things that are in the real world. Or movies. Um, or yeah, well, it could be we drive you to a theater to experience something. We drive you to a gallery to experience something. We drive you to a um, amusement park to experience something very specific. And so I think there's like, there's objects in those places that we can drive people to. There could be products and stores. But you know, the thing that we're most focused on is like, in a world of you know hundreds of thousands of places with all these experiences locked inside of them, how do we take Foursquare users and help them find the stuff that is most interesting to them? The stuff that might be you know, buried around a corner or two floors above them or half a mile away. Discovery. Yeah, how do we help people find that stuff? How do we give people the superpowers that they need to see, the, like, see around corners and see through walls so they can find these things, whether they're places or objects, experiences, their friends? Just like, how do you, how do you make the stuff this way? Are you guys working on uh, wearables at all? I mean, it seems like the kind of thing would be perfect for class or watches. I noticed you have quite a fancy watch. <laughs> fancy watch. <laughs> um, we, we have done a lot of this. Actually, if you click through, click through two slides, click, click. You know, it's like, this is a standard version of like, this is what the notifications look like on phone. I walk into the cupcake shop and it tells me, hey, go get the Dreaming Princess cupcake. and. Um, and if you're on the phone, you should do it on someone's watch. Like this is a Pebble watch of a Foursquare employee. It's like you walk into the place and it buzzes you like, oh, you're here? Like don't spend your time downstairs or upstairs, it's free. And then of course, go to the next slide. Like we built this stuff for, um, actually this is more text messages, go to the next one. Um, we've done this stuff for, you know, for glass too. Like we've done it for glass, for playing around with, does it work for cars, for all different, you know, all different types of wearables. Um, like how do we just make people more aware of their current surroundings, whether it's the place that you are at, or the you know, or the businesses that are kind of within a five minute walk from you or a five minute drive from you, um, you know, through a wide variety of devices. Are you a glass user? Uh, not a regular glass user, mm -hmm. but I do like the feature that this stuff. You know, I like the feature that it, that's breaking. I've worn the uh, the Pebble Watch for a while, okay. and you know, to get those notifications yeah. from those places, it's interesting. Without having to pull your phone out. Without having to pull your phone out. Yeah. yeah, but you know, the thing is, is that I know we're kind of running out of time, but. Um, I think I've always seen people kind of misunderstand a lot of the stuff that Foursquare is doing, and they, they poo poo the check in a sense. But like to your point earlier, like we're doing a lot of thinking about like in this world where we can detect as people move in and out of these spaces, in these custom geofences that we've defined with our own check in data. Like what does it look like if you didn't if you didn't need people to hit that check in button? Mm -hmm. Remember, the point of the company was not to make a killer check in button; mm -hmm. it was to make a product that teaches you about the real world. And you know, it shows you things you might not know. Yeah, it shows you things that you don't even know about. And so, in a world where we don't need people to do that, I think it's kind of fun to imagine what a future version of this would be. Great. Well, we are out of time, unfortunately. Um, thanks very much for coming. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. All right.